the end of January, y'all. We only had a couple more months of winter, depending on where you live. It's January favorites time. Please ignore my kind of interesting hair. I let it air dry today. It's at like an in-between stage where it's like partially wavy, partially straight, partially wet. Like it's really weird. So stop looking at it. I can, I can feel your eyes burning into it. Just stop looking at it. <laughs> we have got quite an amalgamation I don't think I used that right, but a, quite a mixture of different things to talk about. We've got a handful of beauty items I've been loving, but a lot of just other stuff, clothing items, comfy stuff, tea, saline spray, stay with me, trust me, you're gonna wanna hear it. <laughs> Skincare, hair stuff, books, a planner, all kinds of stuff. So let's dive right on in. If you do enjoy this video, I hope that you will subscribe and join me for three videos a week here on my channel. We'll start with the beauty as I always do. So first things first, this flipping blush from from Milani. This is the Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush. Now you may recall Milani had like a squeezable liquid creamy blush that I liked okay. This is so much better. And this is way more of an easy format to use, I personally think. So the way I apply it is I literally get a little bit of the cream on my finger, a little bit goes a long way, and I literally tap it onto my cheeks and it just ends up blending in so beautifully. Sometimes if I get a little bit too much, I'll grab my like sponge and kind of blend it in. The thing is, this gives the most beautiful light glow to the cheeks. There's no shimmer or anything, but it just looks so healthy because it has that slight bit of emollients where it's, I don't wanna say oily because it's not. It stays in place all day long, but it's just pretty. So I have it on today. I feel like, especially in my lighting, it washes things out just a bit, but I just find that it ends up making me look so youthful and just like, ah, you know what I mean? Just that like, ah. I definitely feel like this is very, very similar, a dupe for the Tower 28 blush. Now the reality is the Tower 28 blush is only a little bit more expensive than this. I love both. This is definitely a dupe for it. I have the shade 110 Nude Kiss. One that took me by surprise is from e.l.f. It's their Stay All Night Micro Fine Setting Mist. I haven't really truly used a setting spray in a while. You know, I might have a one-off time that I use one here or there, but I really don't regularly use one. Regularly is a word like rural that I can't say. <laughs> I just literally can't say the word rural. <laughs> the thing that I love about this, the nozzle is really, really good. Look at this. Oh baby, it's like, and it's like a long spray. It smells so nice and fresh. It's got a light scent to it. If you're sensitive to smell, it might bother you, but it's not overwhelming, but it's got green tea, cucumber, and aloe, and it's supposed to kind of nourish the skin, but mostly it's supposed to keep your makeup look fresh, looking fresh. I will say this, when I, I'll put powder on my face and put this on top and it just melts into the powder so nicely where it doesn't make my skin look crazy, crazy oily, but it does take down that powderiness just enough that I think it makes my skin look nice and healthy. But the powder helps even other things out. So it, they work really well in tandem, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I really have been enjoying this. It totally took me by surprise. Highly recommend. This may be my absolute favorite makeup item I've discovered the end of 20, that's hard because this next one too is so high up there with like, I cannot stop using it every day and it's been like months now. This is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Neutral Eyeshadow Palette. They have a couple different ones. This is my favorite. You've heard me talk about this in some videos. I was kind of going back and I don't think I've mentioned it specifically in like a monthly favorites video but I'm pretty sure this was in my Jammy Awards because mm, it's perfect. I've pretty much worn it every day. I'm wearing it today. And in natural lighting, especially when you can really see it, it has this slight beautiful sheen. The colors blend so well together. I just love the way it looks. I always wear Believer, like that is the shade that's my absolute favorite. I want that in a single. I tap it all over the lid. I'll use sandstone to blend it into the crease. And then on days I have a little more time, I'll use Native to kind of darken the crease a bit, which is what I did today. Sometimes I dip into Indie, sometimes I dip into Mystic and Tribe. Tribe is gorgeous on the outer corner too. It's like slightly deeper of a shimmer. I think this is one of my absolute favorite smaller palettes. It always looks good. It is so easy to use, highly recommend. The other one that was a contender with that for like just favorite discovery at the end of the last year was this Charlotte Tilbury highlighter. It is the specifically Hollywood Superstar Glow. <sighs> 
highlighter. Oh, guys. So here's the thing. I am so glad I bought this. This looks too dark for me, doesn't it? I've got decently fair skin and I thought, okay, it's only one shade and I'm hoping they expand the shade range. It's not gonna work for me, like once I got it. There is something magical about this that when I put it in my like highlight regions, it just catches the light so beautifully and seamlessly. And there's something about it. I always get asked what I'm wearing as a highlighter when I wear this, whether it's in videos, on Instagram. I just think there's something special about this. This is such a ginormous pan. I, I'm never gonna run out of it. I'll never need to buy it again. And it's the highlighter I have not stopped wearing for months. I reach for it every single day, every day. I have a question for you guys. So I have a fail. I wanna mention, and this is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil. This is a very good eyeliner, but I it's a fail-ish, and I wanna kinda chat with you guys about it. So this has been around forever. It is like the creamiest eyeliner you will ever touch, ever. Like, it is so stupidly creamy. It'll glide right onto your waterline seamlessly. It'll stay in place all day, however, my gripe is now that I've discovered the L'Oreal Le Liner Signature, eyeliner pencil, it's creamy, not as creamy as the Urban Decay, but it stays on the waterline so well. Like I'll stick it on my upper waterline and I've just lately not done anything on the lower portion of my eyes. And so usually with most liners, I'll have to kind of wipe, like the second you start blinking, that will start transferring down and I'll have to wipe it off a few times. Well, with the L'Oreal stuff, I don't have to do that. It never transfers, even like right away, no transfer. This, however, every other time I use it, it does transfer down. And so there's like three separate times, like within the first hour of wearing it, I'll have to kind of wipe it off of my lower area of my eye. Why is that? And I've been trying to figure out like, is it that, because once it's on, like today I'm wearing it in my waterline, it's not, as far as I can see, it's not transferring down. So I'm like, is it, I didn't sharpen it today, but yesterday I did and yesterday it transferred. So is it when I freshly sharpen it that it starts to transfer? I'm really diving deep, I know. But all I'm saying is it's a great eyeliner, but it's just something to be aware of. If you don't wanna to have to mess with it at all, try the L'Oreal one, plus you'll save money. Like I said, it's not quite as creamy, but once you have it on, it is not budging. I freaking love that stuff. I'm out of it, which is why I'm like, well, let me use this up. And I am going to, once I've used this up, I'm switching back to the L'Oreal. I just love it. By the way, there were like five other things makeup wise I wanted to mention. And I was like, Jessica, hold your horses. I did just do like a month ago, at the beginning of this month, actually, January, I did my Jammy Awards, which is my best of the year, my best makeup of the year across the board, my best skincare and beauty stuff, my best fashion and Amazon favorites, those kinds of things. I did three different videos of all of my favorites in one. So if you are interested in those, definitely check it out. I'll link my Jammy Awards playlist. You can see all three. You can even see previous years if you want. But that is where a lot of my favorites are living right now. And I didn't, I was trying not to double down on anything in this video too much. One skincare thing to mention. This is from Drunk Elephant. It's a newerish launch. They sent it to me a while ago. I finally got around to trying it. It is their F Balm Electrolyte Water Facial. So it says it's got vitamin F microbeads, sodium PCA. Let me just read you what it says because I know that I like the way it feels, but I, and I need to dive deeper into like what's actually in it. So it says it's a cooling quenching overnight mask. It's supposed to plump and restore while strengthening, strengthening the skin's acid mantle. I can't hear the word mantle without thinking of like the earth's layers, like the crust and the, okay. With a blend of barrier replenishing ingredients like niacinamide, sodium PCA, plant squalane, five forms of ceramides, omega fatty, fatty acids, fatty, fatty wop, <laughs> and powerful antioxidants. So it's gonna rehydrate hungover, overly parched skin, making it soft and supple. I don't like the word supple. They're using a lot of words here. Tiny beads loaded with antioxidant rich vitamin F explode during application to deliver extra emollients and soothing hydration. So the way they tell you to use this is to apply it as the last step in your skincare. Like after your hydrator, like moisturizer, after everything, this is last. I was skeptical. I don't really know why, like all of those ingredients I like a lot from Drunk Elephant, but it was kind of one of those things that I'm like, now I feel like certain brands like this are like just reaching for new products to launch. But I have to say, I had to eat my words because I love the way my skin looks after I use this. I've only used this like once or twice a week for the past month or two. 
and I could, I want to use it every, does it say you can use it every night? It doesn't really say, and it says you can mix it with any serum or oil when your skin is extra thirsty. Listen, I really like this. If you have, if you have skin that tends to be normal or dry, I really think you will love adding this in, even just a couple times a week to make this last longer since it is still expensive. But I just feel like I haven't really battled any dry skin this winter, and I normally do. And there have been a lot of other skincare things I've been using that I do think are helping, but this is one of the newer things I added that I am just, my skin is drinking up, my skin looks revived in the morning, so, I have to say, I really, really am enjoying this. And that that's great for me because I don't do a lot of masks anymore. I just, I wish I had the time, but I don't. At the end of the night, the last thing I feel like doing is waiting 20 minutes for a mask to be done. So really the only time I'm ever doing it is when I'm getting a bubble bath, which is like a couple times a month maybe. And so that is a way to kind of get that mask effect, like a hydrating mask effect, without having to rinse it off, without really having to wait, anything like that. So just saying, it's a mask replacement. <laughs> I'm in a very filmy mood. Like I'm very happy to be sitting down and filming, which is the reason I know this video is gonna be long because I just feel like filming. Sorry guys. Okay, stay with me for this one. I know some of you guys are gonna wanna click off because you're like, what is she talking about? This saline spray. You guys, if you are not using a saline spray in the winter when you have the heat on in your house, you should be. It has helped me so much. It helps me with allergies when I have a cold, but especially in the winter, I'll use this morning and night. You don't wanna share it with anyone in your household. Just get your own. We have a similar one for my daughter we can use with her. The dry heat in your house in the winter can really dry out your nasal passages, and this helps so much. But not only that, like I have allergy season in the late spring. This helps me so much much. It just kind of gets stuff moving in there. I don't know, cleans it out. I wish I could tell you exactly what it does. I don't even know. It is just, it makes a huge difference. It helps with headaches I used to get when it, we'd have the heat on every single day in the winter for days in a row. Uh, I also use a humidifier though, and I talk about that in my 10 things to try in 2021 video. Link below. Those are like 10 genuinely, genuinely life-changing things that if you're not using yet, you should be. Go check that video out after this one. Like I said, I'll link it below. Because really, anyway, humidifier is one of those things. So using that and this in conjunction, I have not had any sinus headaches, any issues. It's all moist up in there. It's all good. I Let's talk it. fashion. This sweater, Amazon. I know, Amazon. <laughs> I'll show you a clip of the entire sweater so you can see it. I love the kind of mock turtleneck. It's comfy, it's slightly looser. I love that the sleeves are slightly longer. The texture of the sweater is so pretty. Like, I don't know, man, the color, the cut, the comfort level, like it's everything I want in a sweater, especially if I'm just wearing it around the house with leggings like I'm wearing most things but it's cute going out in as well. I love it with some statement earrings. We'll talk about these in just a sec, but this is one of my favorite discoveries this past month and I I pretty much wear it like once a week. So these earrings I got recently from Target and so I can link them below. I just love the gold with the pearl and like there's that little like stone thing there. They're just so unique and so pretty. I tend to love wearing studs or hoops. And I love statement earrings, but I, I would much prefer to just throw on hoops or studs, but these are really like forcing me to kind of get out of my shell. I mean, you know, to a certain extent, but I just think they're so pretty and they go with so many things. So. Okay, another kind of fashion-y thing, well, it's not fashion, more comfort, are these PJ pants. Now these I think I did mention in my Jammy Awards lifestyle video. These pajama pants, are so good. They're also from Target, so if you replace it in order, you can get the earrings, you can get the PJ pants. I own two pair now of these in two different styles, but these are the stretchiest, most breathable, comfortable pajama slash lounge pants I have ever owned. They're so wonderful. You feel comfortable when you're sitting down, you can eat in them and eat a lot and not feel like you need to loosen anything. Like, they're so good, you guys. I, I would buy 10 and have those just be the only PJ pants I own, but that would be far too many of those PJ pants. But I'm just saying, they're so, so wonderful. All right, I want, I'm not gonna talk about this much because I, I feel like I've talked it to death. I have a whole video on this, but I wanted to mention my favorite planner. This is my 2021 planner. I am, I have tried so many planners, you guys, over the years. I love planning. I used to be a teacher, so I would have planners for that. Like, I've tried Erin Condren. I've tried so many different kinds. This is my favorite because it's totally customizable. The brand is Golden Coil. It's pricey. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I have heard that, I think it's called 
I've heard that there's a company that does it a little bit cheaper and it's similar. So I'll link both below so you can kind of look into both, make a decision for yourself. But I love that you literally choose the pages you want in here and they have so many options. I just think that is the most unique, cool thing ever. If you're an, a social media person, they even have social media planning pages and it's wild. If you wanna see the exact pages I picked and a little walkthrough and review of this, I have an entire video dedicated to it. I will link below. Tea, tea, tea. I'm trying to drink more tea this year as I'm still continuing to drink coffee. And one of my favorites is the Harney and Sons Hot Cinnamon Sunset Tea, but we're not here to talk about that one today. No, no, we're here to talk about the decaf version. They have a decaf version. We ordered this forever ago and it was a two pack on Amazon, but it was like the only place we could find it online. It literally took like a month to get here, but we finally have it because I love the hot cinnamon sunset and I drink it during the day. But at night, sometimes I would also like this tea, but I don't wanna drink the caffeinated version. So here it is. I love, I think Harney and Sons, they nail the packaging. It is amazing tea, but these are definitely my favorite. So again, I know Target sells them, but I don't know that Target sells the decaf, but they definitely sell the regular. Couple of favorite food items. I could go on and on. I had like 10 to mention. I'm like, Jessica, no, no, no. If you wanna see more of my favorite snacky items I did, I'm sorry, I have, this video is full of shameless plugs. I didn't mean to mention all these videos. Videos, but anyway, I did do a vlog recently where I do like a Thrive Market grocery haul and a lot of my favorite snacks are in there. So definitely check that out. I can link below. Okay, vanilla checks. I flippantly mentioned this like a month ago and I'm like, I love vanilla checks cereal so much. Why am I not shouting it from the rooftops? If you have not tried <laughs> vanilla checks, it's kind of like, okay, remember they still sell it Rice Krispie Treats cereal, not Rice Krispie cereal, the Rice Krispie Treats cereal that was in the purple box. I'll put a picture right there. That is one of my favorites, but a slightly healthier version. And actually now that I'm saying it, I don't even know that it's healthier, but the vanilla checks is like a grown up version of that. That's, well, that's what we'll call it. It is deliciously like sweet and vanilla-y, but it's got that checks crunch. You guys, it's one of the most perfect cereals. And another food item I wanted to mention is the Simple Mills banana muffin mix. You can make banana bread out of it too. It's actually gluten-free. We don't eat like a gluten-free diet, but the Simple Mills like mixes are really good. So we made this recently. Actually, my two-year-old was helping me and I did a little Instagram reel about it. Uh, but she, we made little mini muffins out of them and we added chocolate chips. The second you add chocolate chips to this batter, it is just like leaps and bounds. Like it is the most moist batter because it is gluten-free. It's got like almond flour and stuff. I don't know, man, it is, they were so delicious. My husband and I like tore through all of them in like three days. It was embarrassing, but they were delicious. Also my toddler liked to, to just eat the chocolate out of it, of course, and didn't eat the actual muffin. Story of my life. TV and movies. First, we watched Ted Lasso on Apple TV. And if you never heard of it, it has Jason Sudeikis, who I don't know what it is, but I'm so fond of that man. Like I just love Jason Sudeikis. I don't know what it is. And he plays this football coach that moves to London to take over coaching for a soccer team, a football over there, a football team, a soccer team. And coming from American football to like the rest of the world's football soccer, of course was just like night and day. And he's like a good old boy from Oklahoma and he's got this cute accent. And, Guys, I thought I would have no interest in this show because I don't, I just don't follow sports. I wish I cared. I don't even wish that I cared. I just don't, I just don't. So with all of that in mind, I'm going into this thinking, I don't think this is right for me, but so many of you guys recommended it. Y'all, it is hilarious. It is heartwarming. You will cry. You will cry laugh. Like, I love it. We binged it in like two or three nights because it's like, 10 episodes and I think they're only like 30, 30 minutes an episode. So it's a quick watch and I'm pretty sure they've already been renewed for season two. Boy, I hope so. The soundtrack is amazing. Like guys, if you have Apple TV and you're looking for a good, funny, heartwarming 30 minute show to watch, that's the one. You're welcome ahead of time. We also finally, finally watched The Imagineering Story, which is, it follows Disney engineers and like the parks because that's where they're focused on. And you know, the start of Disneyland into the start of Disney World into how they open all the Disney parks around the world. And we knew we would like it. We we're, I mean, that is literally his job is Disney parks. Like we love the Disney parks, but I don't know why we were dragging our feet to watch it. It's a six part series, if you will, an hour each. So it took a while to watch, but when it was over, we were both so sad it was over. I was like, I could watch 
so many episodes about this. It's just so interesting to see the history of everything. They had footage we had never ever seen before from the opening days and all that. But also we learned a ton about parks around the world and just how things work and where the ideas came from and I loved it. If you like Disney even a little bit, I think you will love it. It is on Disney+. Plus. I've read a couple of books in the past month. The one that stands out to me is called Everything Everything. I literally read it in two nights, which is very fast for me, like very fast. It's a novel about this girl that's got this illness where she is just having to spend her entire life in a sanitized house basically with her mom and then she'll have a caretaker that comes in and out and a neighbor moves in and she basically creates this relationship with this neighbor boy through the window and how that changes and the way her life goes after that and I literally could not put it down. It was so, it was such an easy read, but it was a fun read. It was just a fun read and I, it's one that I think about a lot. I don't think it's anything like life changing, but there were quite a few sections of the book that made me tear up and that I highlighted because I was like, oh, that's like a good life truth. So I really liked the book. I think you would too. So those are my favorites and fails for the month. I love doing these videos if you can't tell. I hope that you enjoyed them too. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. It definitely helps me out. Comment below what were some of your favorites this month, whether it was makeup, skincare, food, songs, shows. What shows are you watching? That I'm always curious about. We just started Bridgerton and we're on, well, at the time I'm filming this, we're on episode two. We're still not sold on it, if I'm being honest. We, you know, like it's it's interesting. It's not like it's a boring show by any means, but I don't know, neither one of us are like dying to watch the third episode, but I think we might force our way through and just see what it's all about. But uh, yeah, what are you watching? What are some funny shows you're watching? What are some serious shows you're watching? I would love to know that because we are always in need of suggestions of things to watch. But if you did enjoy, please subscribe. I upload three videos a week. I do it all here on my channel and I would love to have you and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.